I'm Teresa Brand Smith, co curator of the University of Toronto Scientific Instrument Collections exhibition on the transit of Venus. A transit of Venus occurs when Venus passes in front of the face of the Sun as seen from Earth. Preparations have been underway at the University of Toronto for this event, both culturally and scientifically. The University of Toronto Scientific Instruments Collection is a volunteer project led by graduate students at the University of Toronto. This is their cataloging room. Yeah, that's it got started, um, and I think it was 2008. Uh, started as an attempt to clean up um, some uh, clutter in the IHPSC hallway in uh, third floor of Victoria College. Um, some of that clutter consisted, uh, consisted of historical instruments that had accumulated over the years. And uh, so we started cataloging those instruments, um, started speaking to people who understood what they were and why they were there, and things sort of grew from there. We basically started with physics instruments because physics has always been on board with the project and they have a lot of sort of iconic 19th century instruments. We've also worked with psychology uh, that has also a very impressive collection and as you know we've worked with astronomy uh, very recently for the, we've collaborated with the um, transit of Venus and we hope to document their uh, collection further 1878 would be our, our earliest instruments, I would think. And uh, the province gave the university a, a big budget to go out and buy high-end instruments from Europe. From that period, instruments were handmade, impressive looking, um, expensive. But basically, I mean, there's, there's instruments all over campus. And um, not just from the past, but ongoing recent research that we would like to document. Um, we hope that this collection will become a kind of archive of uh, work that's going on uh, on campus. Victoria University and the University of Toronto both proud alumni like author Margaret Atwood, literary critic Northrop Fry, and actor Donald Sutherland. It's here that the University of Toronto Scientific Instruments Collection is currently housing its exhibition on the transit of Venus. Well, the, the two parts of the transit of Venus event um, was our exhibit itself, which you actually see behind me, and the symposium, which were sort of a joint event that we had on April 28th. Well, when, when we went actually to the astronomy department, they said that they'd put most of those instruments in a basement room um, in their department. And we went there, we found what we typically find, which is a hmm, basement room, lots of boxes, temperature control, maybe not exactly what you want, but not bad. The, the Gregorian telescope is definitely my favorite. It's, I guess, one of those examples of brass and glass instruments that everybody's excited about. It, it has a sense of history where you're looking at a historical event through a historical instrument, the style of which was used for transits of Venus that happened 250 years ago. The relationship between the IHPST and Utsik has been one of I guess we are an outgrowth of the IHPST. The uh, UTSIC itself um, is one of the initiatives of the graduate students at the IHPST. The initiative itself, I'd say for the transit of Venus, took off when I made contact with the astronomy department. Collaboration with museum studies has been very important for moving UTSIC forward. And that's one of the great things that UTSIC, I think, has enabled, is the coming together of people from different disciplines, coming together of people from different um, ways of viewing science. It's bringing to light a part of the history that perhaps is not always uh, demonstrated or shown, but an important part in the history of science. Not to ignore the cultural importance of the transit of Venus, the University of Toronto's Scientific Instruments Collection has commissioned a performance of Canadian playwright Maureen Hunter's work by the same title. In Act Two, Guillaume Le Gentil has left his young fiancée Celeste to travel to India to track the transit from there. He returns home to find there have been consequences to his lengthy absence. I think what's really interesting about this play is how it plays, um, plays on the differences between a sort of human timeline and an astronomical timeline, in that you see six years in terms of the difference between the two, the two uh, transits of Venus. It's not a huge amount of time like to see two of, them, two of them in your lifetime when some people probably like, don't even live to see one. But for these characters, six years it's a huge chunk of their lives. Just barely walk through the door and you're going away. Not immediately. Not for months. How many months? Eight. Possibly ten. I intend to spend them all with you. How long this time? How long will I be gone? 
Three years. <laughs> I swear to you, Celeste, by all that's holy, three years, no more. We were thinking uh, performing the play Transit of Venus on the actual and around the actual viewing of the Transit of Venus um, makes so many lines have this odd extra resonance. Um, even just lines referring to certain kind of, I don't know, astronomical terms or events. We know if we were doing this, this play normally, it would be mostly for a theatrical uh, crowd and they might not get it. But in, in this case, we're like, they're gonna get every single, like this isn't, this isn't gonna be jargon to everyone. I travel around you like a planet around the sun. And no matter how far I wander, you always draw me back. You always do, Celeste. You always do. Um, but also just, I don't know, that the presence of that outside, that he's talking, uh, that Le Gentil is talking about how important it is for him to see this event and how it's never going to happen again in his lifetime and the fact that a lot of people would have just come in from having seen it for the last time in their lifetime. I think, I think it's actually going to help with this, the relationship between Le Gentil and Celeste. I don't know if you know what that means, but I need you. Sometimes I can't sleep at night for needing you. I'm sick to death of making do with dreams and, and letters and a phantom lover. I want a real lover. I want a husband. I want a family. I want a future. The Transit of Venus has also inspired an opera written by Canadian composer Victor Davies. Of the transit of Venus is actually this, that uh, the singer who sang in my oratorial book, based on the book of Revelation, um, said to me, I've got this friend in Winnipeg, and she's the friend of this playwright, and she's written this play called Transit of Venus. And the director thinks it should be an opera. And I said, oh, well, I'd love to see you. I'm always looking for opera subjects. Send me the script. And I said, oh, that's really boring. That's all too many words. I, that's not an opera. That's not an opera. Um, then... <clears throat> I subsequently worked with the director uh, of the of the play, Larry DeRosier, and uh, he said, "You know," he said, I, "I'd worked on this play. I always wanted to thought it would make a great opera." And um, I said, "Oh no, too many words, Larry. I read that thing. That's not an opera." So then Larry became the CEO of the Manitoba Opera, and he called me up and he said, "You know that play, Transylvania? We're thinking of making it in, making it into an opera. Great idea." I said, <laughs> I guess I could say, Teresa said to me yesterday something about the uh, confluence of art and the sciences. And uh, it's interesting because, of course, um, if you discover something scientific, well, let's, let's say an astronomical discovery or uh, a discovery in physics, well, that all, there is always that one little insight, that eureka moment. And then, of course, in order to make it substantive, you have to clothe it in mathematics and, and all those other things, right? And um, writing uh, a piano concerto, an op not an opera so much, but uh, I think probably a story that would be an opera. You have to have that germinal material, and you have to clothe it. And then, of course, it has to be um, true to itself, true to the original insight. Otherwise, it's, it, you, you, it's not, you can't be proved. And uh, just as a, a scientific insight has to be proved through mathematics and through all the other things that surround it, an artwork also has to be proved in terms of all the things that surround the original idea have to ring true with the audience. The University of Toronto Scientific Instruments Collection and Department of Astronomy have been hard at work organizing a public viewing event for the transit of Venus at Varsity Stadium. It's now June 5th, and these plans are coming to fruition. I'm here with Mubdi, one of the astronomers at the University of Toronto. Were you anticipating this turnout? Uh, a little, but not as pumped up as they are right now. You've got a lineup around the block. This is crazy. I've never seen something like this for an astronomy event. <laughs> well, now, I see that everyone's got on these glasses. You well, want to tell right. us how they work and why they're important? So what they are is it's actually a sheet of plastic, and what it's doing is reflecting most of the light from the sun. And that's the only way, it's giving a little bit of light in, and that's what we're seeing. Okay. But the problem is, if we let all the light in from the sun, our eyes would get damaged. How damaged? Uh, you might be going blind. Oh no. So, so, how long can we wear these for? For approximately three minutes at a time. So you can stare at the sun, as I'm doing right now, for about three minutes. So Dr. Michael Reed, 
What do you think of this turnout? I think it's fantastic. We, we hoped that we would get maybe a few hundred people when we first started planning, and we have well over 5,000 people now, so I'm, I'm thrilled. And so why is transit science so important? Well, historically, transit science was important to establish the distance between the Earth and the Sun, which we call the astronomical unit. And that's the basic unit we use to construct the whole distance ladder that we use to measure distances to everything. So until you know the distance between the Earth and the Sun accurately, you can't measure the distance to a distant galaxy accurately. So that was really important historically. Nowadays, we have better ways of doing that, but the transit, transit science in general is still important because transits are how we find planets orbiting other stars. So right now, we can all look at the Sun and we can see this little dot, that's Venus. With distant stars, you can't actually see a little dot, but you can see that the star dims a tiny bit as the dot passes in front of it, even though you can't see this, the dot. And that's how we find planets orbiting other stars. I'm here with Paul Greenham, a student from the Institute for the History and Philosophy of Science and Technology. So Paul, tell me about this telescope you have here. Well, this is a Gregorian style telescope. It was actually made in 1830, so it's about 180 years old. If we look at it, this is the kind of telescope that would have been used in the 1761 and 1769 transits of Venus. But you can imagine this telescope being used um, at that time period. They would have put it into this nice box and put it onto a ship and sailed to the seven seas, uh, traveling with it. So I see you have a special modification on this telescope. Why do you have that? Well, uh, it's a solar filter because if we didn't have that and we were looking at the sun, two things could happen. One, we could fry the telescope, which for a 180-year-old telescope we don't really want to do. Uh, and the second is you'll fry your eye, which is also not, not ideal. This is, this is not a period um, filter. So if it looks a little bit out of place, it is. So, um, so listen, oh, one more little thing I was going to mention, I'll mention to you now. I'm here with the composer Victor Davies of the opera The Transit of Venus, based on the work of Canadian playwright Maureen Hunter. Victor, tell me a little bit about the opera. Whoa! Big question. That's big a big answer. question. It's the story of the, uh, Guillaume Le Gentil, who was a very famous French astronomer in the 18th century who uh, misses the transit twice and in the course of that loses the woman he loves as well so it's a tragic ending yeah. what's your favorite part of the opera my favorite part of the opera yeah. well there's a great solo for uh, celeste when she sings i need your guillaume and it's about she doesn't want to have a guy just writing letters and just a shadowy figure somewhere in india or the philippines chasing transits she wants a real man she wants him to be there she wants flesh or blood We're at Varsity Stadium at the planetarium set up by the Department of Astronomy. Might not be much to look at from the outside, but on the inside, they're giving tours of the universe. So what are you guys going to show here? So uh, what we have here is well, a planetarium which is showing the uh, transit of Venus, which is happening today. So what you can see is the Sun, which uh, has a little circle in front of it, which is Venus. And what will be happening is Venus passes in front of the Sun. So uh, this planetarium, besides showing what you can see during uh, you know, a regular day or a regular night, we can also tour the universe. So we can uh, lift off the surface of the Earth, and we can look at different objects in the solar system, and we can even zoom out to the entire galaxy and look at other star systems and nebula, and pretty much anything you can think of in the universe that we're able to observe, we can look at with the planetarium. Uh, so if you didn't get a chance to come down today to Varsity Stadium, where we're having this giant, amazing transit event, um, we also have uh, monthly public tours where you can uh, come to uh, visit a lecture about an astronomical topic. And uh, afterwards we have planetarium shows which you can sign up for online. And also telescope tours. So you can come and look through our telescopes which are located on the roof of the Planet Physical Labs building. Although the weather was ominous at first, over 5,000 people were able to view the transit from Varsity Stadium. So from all of us here at the University of Toronto, we'll see you in 2117.